Francisco, Steph Curry, 92 points in his previous two games. Clippers coming off a loss to the Spurs on Tuesday during the national anthem. Both teams took knees together in solidarity in response to the events in D.C. Some players wore shirts with Black Lives Matter written across the front. Curry with a career-high 62 points on Sunday. Kawhi Leonard playing in back-to-back games for the first time since 2017. Just over a minute to go to the second. Warriors down eight. Kelly Oubre knocks it away, and Tomahawks at the other end. Very next possession. Draymond Green to James Wiseman, the rookie. Warriors pull within four. Not a big night for Curry. Just one for six from three-point range and a career low, I'm sorry, a season low, 13 points. He shot five for 17, but doing Curry things there. Warriors finish the half on a 9-0 run, going to the breakdown 52-51. Under six minutes left in the third, Clippers up by two. Here's Leonard. Fadeaway jumper working, Clippers back up four, less than a minute later. Clippers bench, not as potent as it was last season, but Lou Williams can still get it done off the pine. Clippers will go into the fourth up six. This is the first time this season the Clippers had their full complement of players with everybody available. Early fourth quarter, Warriors down to Andrew Wiggins. Nailing the three. The Warriors go back up by one. And then some good ball movement leads to a Damian Lee three. And the Warriors go up three. And Curry loving it from the bench. A little over six minutes left to play. It's 91 apiece. Leonard, 21 points and four assists. Curry trying to get back into the game. Clippers with a two-point lead. Under four minutes to go. Clippers by three. Leonard draws the defense, kicks it out to Nicholas Batum. He puts the Clippers up six, and then Leonard to Batum once again. And the Clippers do a good job on Curry and hold on to win it by seven. 108 to 101. A couple games into the season at this point, Paul, how do you think? are building your chemistry with Kawhi Leonard um I think you know it's 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 ongoing ongoing process is trust between myself and him um you know uh it's a pleasure being on that court with him I enjoy this process with him I think we're learning we're figuring it out um most importantly we're we're, we're growing together and uh we're helping leading this team together Paul George got out to a slow start offensively in this one but he finished tied for a game high 21 points despite all of it attempt all of his attempts being contested. On defense, George held down seven different Warriors players, holding them to one for nine shooting as a primary defender. Let's bring in Tim Legler once again. So, Tim, we know about Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, but a big part of what the Clippers were able to do last year in the past few years was that bench. No Montrez Harrell now coming off the pine, but they still got some guys who can get it done. What's up with their role players? Yeah, it's a little bit of a different makeup staying with their supporting cast. These guys are more going to be spot-up shooters. And as great as those two stars are, their fortune is completely tied to how well their supporting cast can make timely threes. And that's really what ended this game. Golden State hung around. Their, their, back, their bench did a great job at the start of the fourth. But then this one's sort of a broken play three, but Patrick Beverly steps up, not afraid of the moment, knocks down a three. And then these were the absolute two daggers. First, Kawhi Leonard draws enough attention, obviously, it, backing guys down with the paint. Nicholas Batum steps into a three, and then one more. And this is a really difficult shot. It's a great closeout right there by Draymond Green. He just can't quite get there in time, and Batum knocks it down. And also, at the start of that run stand, Luke Kennard also contributed with the three to really trigger that run. So when you look at the makeup of this team, you're not going to have guys like Lou Williams who can just go get it on their own uh, to the extent that he could when he was playing alongside Montrez Harrell. They had that combination out there. Uh, you're not going to have a guy like Harrell who could go clean up the glass and get you points that way. This supporting cast is going to be more guys that space the floor, wait on their moment, 
and then they've got to come through to take the pressure off of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, and they did it in this one uh, to help bail them out. So the Clippers get a win, a hard-fought win against Golden State, who was playing very well coming into the game. Yeah, those same two teams will do it again on Friday. We'll see how that one turns out. Tim, we appreciate the breakdown. Thanks, Dan. Great story by Israel Gutierrez and Bam Adebayo. One reason why Miami was able to upset the Boston Celtics in last year's Eastern Conference Finals. That rematch, 7.30 tonight on ESPN. Tim Legler, I know that you're going to be watching that closely. And both of these teams, they're expected now. They, they want to, of course, make deep runs again this year. What are you watching for when they play tonight? Yeah, I think what you're seeing right now is the Miami Heat are a team that people are going to be a little bit more prepared for. Now, they took advantage of unprecedented circumstances in that bubble and give them credit because mentally that was a challenge. They were able to meet that challenge and get all the way to the NBA Finals. I think now coming into this year, people are a little bit more prepared for them as you go into these matchups. So the key for this team is going to be, are you seeing an evolution in their young core? Some guys that really started to make a name for themselves down there. Bam Adebayo, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero at the top of the list. Are you seeing the evolution in those players? Because that's what it's going to take. They have to continue to move their ceiling. And you, certainly you've seen it with Bam Adebayo. He's now leading this team in scoring career highs in field goal percentage, free throw percentage. This is the highest PER on the team. He's taken that leap. When it comes to Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson, when you're on the radar for teams now and you're at the top of that whiteboard, it's a little bit more difficult to replicate what you were able to do down there. And I think that's now what the Heat are going to have to face with teams being more prepared for them. For Boston, same thing. They've got a lot to prove. This is a team yeah. with two young star forwards. One guy I think could be an MVP of the league one day, and Jason Tatum. They have got to now prove that they can continue that consistent climb to where on a nightly basis you see a team you believe could be an NBA champion, and that's what I'm looking for tonight. It's a great barometer for both teams, Sage. Yeah, both teams right now, 3-3, three and three, right at 500. And I know it's early, but it's not the Heat, it's not the Celtics or the Bucks that are at the top of the standings in the Eastern Conference. It's the 6-1 and one Philadelphia 76ers. Doc Rivers, the new head coach there. What do you see that's working so well early on? Well, I think the main thing is they change. the look of their team in their terms of their spacing. They went out and they got a couple of guys in Danny Green and Seth Curry. That And Danny Green hasn't really shot it great yet, and they're actually making the same number of threes as a team that they did a year ago. But the difference is the way their offense looks and the amount of space that Joel Embiid has, the amount of space that Ben Simmons has, the amount of space that Tobias Harris has. All three of those guys now look much more comfortable. Uh, because of the addition of perimeter shooting and what that means to your team and how you run your offense. They have easily been the most consistent team in the Eastern Conference to this point. They haven't really laid a dud yet. They've come out, they've their schedule hasn't been tough, but they've taken care of those teams very systematically. So very impressive start. I think Doc Rivers has given them a level of of credibility in terms of what they're buying into. And when you watch the Sixers now, you're starting to believe a little bit more. Maybe this is the group, and it will come together this year. I think that's what Daryl Morey is watching before he would consider any personnel changes. He wanted to see Doc Rivers' imprint on this team with these two stars, and you're seeing it, and the early returns are fantastic. Yeah, what a difference a year makes. What a difference a couple of mo months makes, for that matter. Uh, Tim Legler with the latest from the NBA. Thank you. And by the way, this week, the... 
Clippers and Warriors, they highlight our ESPN NBA doubleheaders tonight and Friday. Plus, we'll have the Ravens-Titans wildcard game on Sunday as well as, oh yeah, the national championship game.